Albert Park, Melbourne, and travels over to Japan. It's round four, and earlier in the season, we were at one of the most famous and most historic Formula One circuits in the world. Suzuka is Formula One, and we're glad to be back. It's the fourth round of the 2024 calendar. After Verstappen dominating in Bahrain and Saudi, it now goes Australia to Sainz. Japan is here before two weeks we're in China, then it's back over to Miami. The European season begins in Emilia Romagna in mid-May, followed then by Monaco. Canada takes a brief trip over and stops the European season before Spain, Austria and Great Britain leads us to the halfway stage of the year. Hungary and Belgium take us to the summer break before the Netherlands and Italy, followed then by Azerbaijan round out the European season. Singapore then takes us with the United States, Mexico, Sao Paulo, then Vegas before returning to the deserts with Qatar and Abu Dhabi to round out the season. Max Verstappen leads the championship by just four points coming into this weekend to Charles Leclerc in second. Sergio Perez is third on 46, a point back to Leclerc. Carlos Sainz, Victor, last time out, now moves into 40. Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris have McLaren 5-6 before George Russell puts in seventh, ahead of the two Aston Martins of Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll. And Lewis Hamilton down in 10th position, only on eight points. Yuki Tsunoda has 11th with 6, he's tied with Oliver Behrman. Then we get Nico Hulkenberg and Kevin Magnussen on 3 and 1. Albon, Joe, Ricardo, Ocon, Gasly, Bottas and Sargent still no points this season. In the Constructors' Championship, Red Bull also lead the championship by just 4 points to Ferrari, 97 to 93. McLaren have holding off easily to that of Mercedes, who only have 26 compared to McLaren's 55. It's Mercedes in a battle with Aston Martin, a point between them. Visa Cash Up RB have two points cleared to Haas, before Williams, Sauber and Alpine still pointless this season. Let's take a look around the Suzuka International Race Circuit. The only figure of eight on the Formula One calendar, 3.608 miles, a total of 18 turns, and it is flat out. Built in the 1960s, it's one of the best circuits in the world. It's important to get a good exit out of the last corner and hurtle downhill towards turn number one. Back on the power, full throttle, see what you can get towards it as well. You can carry so much more speed in here than you first think. Literally lift and coast, gentle on the throttle, then break down into turn two. Turns three, four, five, six and seven are called the S's. You can only get these right once a weekend, Jensen Button used to say as he navigated these back in his McLaren days. Up the hill we come then to the top of the Dunlop Curve, a very fast part of the track before you head in to Degna 1 and Degna 2. Downhill braking spot, easy to get it wrong and end up in the gravel trap. Heading up towards the hairpin at turn 11, flat out from 8th gear, down into 2nd gear, hold the inside, it's slightly banked, the rear wants to step out and exit. Back on the power as you head down through the 200R at turn 12. Drop down into a double apex 13-14 left-hander called Spoon Curve. Flip the car in, first in fifth gear, then drop down fourth gear before back on the power. Long run up past the school pit lane where drivers get taught how to race here in Suzuka towards the fearsome one of 30R. It's flat out. Ride the curb at the exit as you hurtle down towards the braking zone into the Casio Triangle and then smoothly on the throttle downhill towards the finish line. Put on the power maximum and that is a lap of the Suzuka International Race Circuit here in Japan. 
Rain, 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 no matter when we come here, whether it be in October or April, it is showers galore. It's a damp track ahead of free practice too for the Japanese Grand Prix here at Suzuka. Hello everybody, welcome to Free Practice 2 then here at the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. This then round four of the 2024 campaign and alongside me in this session is Josh T. The sun just beginning to burst through the clouds here in the UK on the morning and we begin with the news uh, of no Logan Sargent in this second practice session. Uh, Williams just now confirming to us via a statement that due to the extent of damage to Logan Logan's car. He will not participate in FP2. The team will continue repairs in time for tomorrow's free practice session. The chassis is okay, uh, but it is gearbox and the rear suspension that needs a lot of work as well. The floor's damaged and uh, not a very good thing to do is to have an accident when we're limited on spares. But Josh T, good morning to you. Uh, well, we now know that they don't have a chassis spare Williams until Miami. Alpine don't have one until China. Seems that everybody's racing with one hand tied behind their back this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, free practice to then. And, well, as you said, Josh, whether it is October or April, it's raining. Whether it's yesterday or today, whatever month it is, there's always some rain in the UK as well. Yeah, it's a bit drizzly outside as well, and it's even setting my uh, chest off. So if I'm coughing at all during this broadcast and I go to mute the microphone, you'll know why. I've literally got a nice hot cup of tea uh, in my Apollo uh, travel mug as well, and uh, there'll be several of those coffees as well coming in, presumably throughout the rest of the weekend. But uh, this is our second show of the day. The first session this morning saw Max Verstappen fastest overall from Sergio Perez second and Carlos Sainz finishing in third position. Sainz, 32 thousandths of a second off for Sergio Perez's time uh, but two tenths behind Max Verstappen Verstappen ahead of Perez by a tenth and 0.181 so I think JT it looks like again coming here where last year Max outqualified Checker by over a second at this circuit it looks like normal service has been resumed for the Red Bulls out front yeah it looks like it it was a one-off weekend last time out in Australia just like how it was in Singapore where we had the exact same circumstances in <laughs> Singapore yeah. as we did in Australia. Yeah, Russell crashing on the last lap. <laughs> Carlos Sainz taking it in. I do apologise. Uh, Carlos Sainz taking the win and Crofty even doing the same thing as well. We're saying you can hear the, the cheers of the crowd. And then Japan is the next race on the calendar. It's pretty much identical uh, situations coming through as well. So we're hopefully going to get through this session uh, without having a coughing fit. We will see how that goes uh, to come into it. But Verstappen uh, was top of the pile this morning. Uh, it's overcast, cold, risks of showers in this session. Rain, yes, is what we're seeing on our timing screens at the moment. It is raining out there, so uh, we're going to have intermediate running. But for sure, a very big session ahead of us because we are expecting there to be rain on Sunday for the Grand Prix. So they want to get out there and make sure everything is okay for the testing procedures and make sure that they've scrubbed a set of vintage. You get four sets of intermediate tyres and three sets of wet weather tyres, but you do get an additional set of intermediates if you use one on the Friday. So they'll get this set back to become five inside of the pool. And I think, JT, we're going to see, hopefully, quite an interesting session. As you can see, the rain clouds still appear at the circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully no one bins it as well as we don't want that, especially. I don't want to say it, and I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say what happens if the other car bins it as well. And hopefully oh. I don't curse it because I didn't say the team or driver. I know you're on about, but that could be the factor. OK, sit back, relax then. The rain has come in, as you can see on the monitor. Clouds all around. It's the second practice session for the Japanese Grand Prix. Let's head up to the commentary box and get this session underway.
Low grip conditions and low atmosphere. This is going to be quite an entertaining session. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, well done for getting up or staying up and joining us. It's round four of 24 in 2024, and it comes here at the Suzuka International Racing Circuit. Japan is mad about Formula One. Some of the best fans in the world. They love their atmosphere, and we love coming here. It's a 5.807 kilometer circuit. 64.44% of the track is full throttle. Only the one DRS zone on the run down towards turn one. But you get turn one, the first curve, the S's, and into Dunlop, Degna, up there as well. Some fantastic parts of the track, all of it requiring the hardest tires. C1 white hard is a second lap slower. C2 medium is six tenths a lap slower. And the C3 soft is the fastest tyre, but we will be needing the green intermediate and blue wet weather tyres. Ideally, though, the green intermediate, as it is currently damp outside on the circuit. We've had rain falling just before the start of the session, and the max are on as well, all set to get going. So <laughs> it is... It is raining. There goes the cough. Uh, it is raining. Uh, 40 degree is air temperature. Track temperature is at 17.6 JT, and we're all sort of waiting to see what's going to happen as the session will go into a bit of a unknown territory. Hello. Hello. Yeah, absolutely. The fans are in force despite the rain, and uh, with a few clouds overhead, the Suzuka circuit as well. We'll see what this session brings to us as well as so we're just a couple of minutes into the green flag and pit lane open for the start of this free practice too. Sonoda fans out there watching on as well gives us a thumbs up and a wave as well wonderful atmosphere of course Sonoda was one of two Japanese drivers out there this morning with Amuro Wasa who was out and took part in the first part of the practice session did very 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 well indeed as well as they come in just a reminder about the F1 fantasy team leagues as well we'll be getting ours sorted going into uh, tomorrow ahead of qualifying so I'll pick after today and I'm going to let Megan pick about what's happening in the future as well because I've now been told categorically JT I'm not allowed to pick because I keep picking Salva and they're having horrible times with it so it kind of makes sense who have you got in the F1 Fantasy League I think I've not I'm definitely not changed it from last weekend yeah. I know I definitely ran for Stappen because at the end of it I was laughing that over the weekend he had Minus 10 points. Uh, yeah. You seen the same thing I just saw on the screen, JT? No. With the flag. Uh, a, bit, a bit controversial. Uh, in some parts of it as well, what we just saw. Surprise they showed, so they showed that. Let, a, let me go on to I go. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be making the, the waves around Twitter. Oh, that's amazing. That man has a remote control Red Bull on top of his head and the real lights are flashing. Look at that. That's how it, it goes. It's a remote control car. That is brilliant. Now, I've got a remote control McLaren, the MCL 37 that was brought for me for Christmas. I've got it upstairs. I'll have to bring it down for the, for the race on Sunday. And I've got an, a Ferrari SF 1000 as well without any stickers on it because I cannot put the stickers on for the life of me. I would get them wrong. I know I would. So, green light in around about eight seconds' time. George Russell's not going out in the car just yet. He's got the headset on, and we're going to be waiting to see what's going to happen. And the second practice session for the Japanese Grand Prix is go. So away we go. We start ticking down the timer, and we're going to wait to see what's going to happen. But at the moment, JT, nobody wants to head out there on the circuit and be the first to meet these conditions. Uh, while, while the track gets better. Yeah, absolutely, everyone. Just waiting for now. And no activity in pit lane. The starter marshal with its hand out looking to see if it's raining. 
Let's go down to Rachel Brooks. She's down in the pits. Going. They've been waving and doing all sorts of waves. They're doing clapping and like the Queen song as well, just to get them going while they wait for the cars to come out. Um, Esteban Ocon's just come out into the pit lane and done the tried and tested method of, of putting his hand out. And if you do that right now, your hand stays dry. It's stopped raining. Um, I'll give you an update throughout the session on how the rain is. But Ant was asking me to do it from uh, one to five. I'd say right now, it's actually just gone to zero. It was about a 0.5, it's now gone to zero. No rain right now, and it's not that slippy underfoot either. I come across onto the paintwork. That well, is a little bit slippy, trainers. but it's not too bad. These aren't my new ones. I've had to put my old ones back on. I don't want to get the new ones wet. Ooh. And this is grippy, so it's actually not bad down here. I think they should go out, but right. I'm not a driver, so. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, we're with you. We think they should go out too. Damon Hill is uh, back in London following the action. Uh, he, like uh, a lot of you, has got up early, especially to see some cars. And at least you did in the first practice session with Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, one and two for Red Bull. As you expected, champ or not? Yep, um, I guess this is the sort of circuit that suits the Red Bull, and it certainly did last year. And uh, But that we're looking at Landon Norris. I think that they, they also have hopes of doing well. They did well last year, so I'm keen to see how this pans out once they go out on the circuit. Yep, they haven't yet left the circuit, which means me and JT are having to do conversation chats as well about absolutely nothing. There's the cherry blossom trees as well. They're absolutely fantastic, but... Uh, I suppose, I suppose it's a hay fever's nightmare out there at the moment. I know certainly up here in the commentary box right now, I'm struggling not to A, cough, or B, uh, have a runny nose. But that's only because A, running on very limited sleep, and B, uh, there is a bit of a bug going around. I think it's uh, trying to attack me at the moment. And probably having the heat on in the commentary box hasn't helped matters either. And if you like somebody who uh, as well uh, suffers with asthma, you do get a bit of a dry throat during the middle of the night as well. So that's always the factor. So what do you think we're going to see, uh, JT? Nobody going anywhere on the circuit and just waiting around to see what's going to happen next? It does feel like we're just in that game of, OK, let's wait until somebody heads out and cleans the track up. Yeah, absolutely, because there's no activity at all. Max Verstappen still out the car next to Christian Horner. There's a look at Logan Sargent's garage next to Alex Albon's, and they've got the screens up. And it's very secretive down there at the garage. I don't know why they bother putting the screens up because nobody wants to copy Williams' car at the moment as well. Uh, the oh, most wow. Well, it's the most basic floor in Formula One as well. And it's a, it's a surprise they're not last at the Constructors' Championship either. That still belongs to Alpine. But Williams have no points. They still run seventh at the Constructors' Championship alongside Sauber and the RB. Although, no, I stand corrected because Sonoda got some points last time out, didn't he? So... Uh, that uh, pushed him up for the first points of the year for RB. So Williams drops to eighth in the Constructors' Championship as well. Haas scoring double points last time out in Australia. Uh, this is an ideal for Danny Ricciardo, of course. Sat out first practice session, gave his seat to Mumu Wasa. I was hoping that the rain wouldn't come down. It has, and he's now struggling out there. But if we take a look at the circuit uh, on the webcam, which I did find the link for, by the way, uh, very quickly as well. Uh, it, it, it's a bit still overcast, but it's looking a little bit brighter than what it was at the start of the session. This is a 30 second loop, so every minute it uh, does a 30 second loop for us on the webcam. It looks to be okay, doesn't it? I mean, I would head out there on a set of inters and then very quickly at this circuit, it drains well. We'll be on dry tyres. Yeah, we'll have to see as we look at the RB pit wall. There's Liam Lawson, who raced here last year in Japan, of course. It was his last race, uh, where he had a fantastic opening lap battle with Yuki Tsunoda, to which I, even I said in the commentary at the time, if he keeps doing that, he'll get, definitely have a seat in Formula One. Uh, he uh, will have a seat next season as well. In fact, maybe even have a seat soon, because Danny Ricciardo, I believe, has been given, what, three races to turn his form around? Unless Liam Lawson would get the drive, and do you reckon that's a, a possible... Oh, hello. We've got Darth Vader and Jos Verstappen. And we've got Michael Schumacher in the Benetton. And I believe that's George... Uh, no, there's Nick De Vries in the Williams in his one-off appearance. Wow, that's a throwback. Jos the boss, who uh, has done well here in Japan in the past. 
Yeah, there's a, that's a great bike helmet as well with the Red Bull. If, you're wondering, if anybody's wondering, by the way, what uh, Max Verstappen's helmet says this weekend, because it is in Japanese, it does say All Cup Red Bull Racing. It's just in Japanese. And, yeah, I was going to say, they, it's started raining again out there. It does look a little bit like they're putting it back up. There's the start line. I think there. they just saw some uh, rain just drop onto the camera. Oh, here we go then. Podium this weekend would seem to surpass Ricardo for 31st on the all-time win list with 33 top three finishes, of course. Si uh, Leclerc took his 32nd podium last time out. Danny Ricardo has 32 on his list as well, running for the RB team. And for Carlos Sainz, it was a 19th career podium. But crucially enough, Ferrari now stand at 799 podiums in Formula One. They have got the most in history, but they're about to, they could get their 800th podium in the sport this weekend. Also, uh, Red Bull could get their 100th pole position this weekend as well, if they take it. So there's a lot to uh, play off here. As uh, they come into it, it's still raining. As Omi doing what he said he was and taking a watch uh, in the background, he's managed to wake up. Don't worry, mate, uh, you haven't missed a thing because it's raining. So uh, you may as well go back to sleep, Omi. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to have any running for at least half an hour uh, at this rate. Japanese fans, it's absolutely fantastic. Are no sign of the clear. This is where I wish we had a highlights package from this morning and throw it in as well, because then we can have a break. But no one's heading out there. Was it dry this morning, Josh? It was perfectly dry, yeah. But overcast conditions, but similar uh, track temperature. And, of course, we've come here earlier on in the year, so the track temperature usually here is, what, 30 to 40 degrees? Air temperature's around about th uh, 20 to 30 at this time of year. But now we've come here in April... Uh, we're expecting one of the coldest Japanese we've, uh, Grand Prix we've ever had. Uh, average temperature is between 13 and 18 degrees. Track temperature is expected not to go above 25. So it's a very cold weekend and it's going to be a very interesting situation for everybody adjusting it. And I think it's, it's great for the cars though, isn't it, Josh? Because as we know, cooler conditions, the cars run faster and better. So it's going to be... The coldest Japanese Grand Prix, but also possibly one of the best Japanese Grand Prix. Yeah, absolutely. I've just looked over at the timing screen and rain has gone from yes to no. It has, yeah. Yeah, I thought about that. Top of the screen as well. Thanks to Multiviewer for providing us with our timing deltas. Morning to Jess, who says it's, it, it is uh, JB Motorsports podcast time. Joking, of course. No, it really is Jess. <laughs> I know you're at work, Jess, probably uh, very soon, so I wouldn't ask you to hop in. But if we go an entire session with anybody out there on the track, mine and Josh T's voices might just have gone. More rain is possible. There's a chance of further showers in this session, but also across the weekend, as such, the teams will be wary of using too many of their allocated intermediate tyres. So there is the possibility, JT, of more rain in this session. Normal alone. grip conditions, race control. Excellent, excellent. Come on, let's go going. Let's get going. Uh, I am at work now, just uh, lurking, just started as well. So normal grip conditions, which means we don't have to have the wet tyres. They can go straight out there onto the normal dries and we can get going as Red Bulls get drunk all the way around the LED screens all set we are 10 minutes into this second practice session for the Japanese Grand Prix and so far we have had no cars out on the track and as always we're having to play the field of let's just see how far we go in a session before uh, one of us loses out but my voice is uh, not dying but I'm particularly cough at the back of the throat So, uh, I'm just receiving some information that the sky might be going to an ad break, so I'm just getting ready to press the red button as well to come into it. There's the first corner. What a first corner we've seen here. The first curve. Yeah, there it is. I thought so. I did tell you, didn't I? I heard, I heard uh, the radio. Not coming from Jess this weekend, though. Uh, I just had to point out. Uh, she's not uh, in control this weekend. I think I'm on the, one, the wrong Wi-Fi network as well. No, I'm on the right one, but it can't tick the box. So that's uh, great in the moment to come into it. 
Yeah, the Wi-Fi is really struggling out there at the moment, so we've got no deltas at the moment and no TV pictures as we wait. Ah, here we go. I have my phone working. So, no one's heading out into the circuit, and that's going to be a problem. So then, Josh, a quick question to you while we get things sorted. Who do you think's got a possibility of taking a surprise win this weekend? I mentioned this to Omi this morning. Lando looks quite good. Ferraris look quite good. But if it's not the Red Bulls, uh, who's your money on? Yeah, well, here at Japan, if it's not the Red Bulls, I would be quite surprised and uh, a little bit like, what's going on under that Red Bull? Because it would be two races running where they've had problems, but Japan is one of their strongest tracks, I think, as well. Verstappen, a second last year. A pole, I believe it was, a temp, uh, like yeah. two temps in practice one, 0 0.181, as we look at Lewis Hamilton. We've managed to get our pictures back, which is uh, great via the pit lane channel. Just uh, flicking back and forth. All we missed was, I believe, Tio Porcher down there in the garage as well. I can't quite tell. Yeah, uh, no, it was Jack Dillon. Jack Dillon down there at uh, Alpine. Just uh, take a quick look. There's the Ferrari fans watching on. So no one in a hurry. We're going to go about 20, 30 minutes here without a car on the circuit, which is a, a bit unusual. And we're not F1 TV or Sky, where you've got three commentators. We've got two commentators and uh, not many TV pictures uh, going forward as well to keep an eye on these matters. But Hamilton out on track, Josh. Oh, Lewis, thank you. Lewis, thank you. There he is, Lewis Hamilton. Into turn one, we are going to get him go There he is. He's, we're seeing him now in the TV pictures. He's going out on medium compound tyres. So we can thank Lewis Hamilton for getting this session underway. 13 minutes of fill. That felt longer, didn't it, everybody? But finally, practice two is underway on dry tyres. And it doesn't look that bad either, does it, Josh? Not a lot of spray. Dry tyres look OK. Normal group conditions. They could have gone out 12 minutes ago. Yeah, there's no spray at all from the back of Lewis Hamilton's car as he goes up through the Ethers. We're on board with him. I'm looking more at the onboard. Don't know if you are. I'm not looking at the offboard camera. I'm completely looking at Lewis's onboard to make sure nothing's wrong with it. Car's okay. There's no twitching around the circuit either. Into the back half, into Degner's. Down as well, four thirds. Back on the accelerator. Yeah, it looks like it's okay to me. The track looks fine. We're good to go. Anyone else going to follow suit? That's the question. All we've got at the moment is well, Lewis, though. Go on. Hopefully, now that one's gone out, they'll see that the track's okay and we'll have more go out. All everyone I take a look at is the throttles as well because that'll tell us if they if they're leaving the pit lane before we actually know it as well. So I always take a look at the pedals, uh, which we have access to uh, up here in the commentary box thanks to Multiview. In fact, I'll show them on the screen now actually as well because uh, on your screen you see the driver, the interval, the last lap time, the best lap time, sectors one, two, three, the tire, what age they are, gear, speed, DRS, and pedals, and that pedals gives us an information graphic about when they go out on the circuit as well. So when we're calling a lap guide, uh, this gives us an interesting... So this is from Lewis Hamilton. Uh, he says, uh, he's been told by Bono, just be mindful if it's slippery, then we'll come back in. We're not learning anything. Lewis says, it's pretty dry. There's a couple of... Oh, here he is. Curves and stuff a little bit. OK, copy, yeah. So just be careful on those curves, but uh, if you're happy, it'll be strap mode two. Yeah, so Lewis saying it's pretty dry. Uh, curves outside, they're a little bit wet. OK, copy, yeah. Just be careful on those curves, but if you're happy, strap mode two. So Lewis will go for a full-on lap time, which is what we were expecting him to uh, do as well, which is brilliant. As they come back through, here's Hamilton now, up towards the hairpin at turn 11. Has he backed off the lap time? Because his first sector was a 36.494. Uh, I think he has uh, backed up a little bit. Fred Vasseur watching on. He's driver for 2025, of course. He's already signed Lewis Hamilton. That was announced pre-season. And that was all the big speculation, of course. And there's the weather radar, JT, and more rain incoming. And quite a, a lot of it coming in as well, actually. So this dry weather, only for a few moments, it seems. 
Yeah, absolutely, which should hopefully make more cars on the track. I can see another driver with their pedals, and I believe it's one of the Red Bulls of... No, it's Ricardo. It's RB, it's Ricardo, yeah. So Ricardo's coming out on the circuit. He's got himself out, out there as well with the pedals. You can see him actually take a look at it on our screen. Uh, he's, look, he's second, now comes out on the track. So we got to tell that because of this. Here's Hamilton. Is there anyone else out? Negative loose, yeah. We're happy to box. Uh, we've just got some brake indicators up at sector one now. So Lewis completes the sector times as Danny Wick heads out there, but now uh, they might tell Lewis to go straight through and do a practice start. And I think, is he going to come in? No, Lewis comes in. It's an anti clockwise circuit, this one, in terms of the pit lane. So Red Bull are actually right at the end of the pit lane instead of being first at the pit lane. Oops, okay, they're doing the dizzy camera as Lewis comes in. The cut and the camera just went whoop around the outside with a complete 360. And it is now raining in the pit lane again, JT. So ah, it's going to be one of those sessions, isn't it, where it's up and down, up and down, up and down. The rain still says no. Here's Ricardo. Thanks, David. Yeah, it's uh, starting to rain more. Yeah, yeah. And it's that's yeah. Track surface slippery at sector 21. And yeah. And is the front stretch. Yeah. And now it says clear, and now tracks are and now clear. So it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. They can't tell what, what they're making their mind up is. Uh, I'm looking that. at the track map on Multiviewer. Yeah. Uh, go down. Uh, I'll be down Rachel. Down. The hood is up because it's about a two now out of five for this rain. It's got heavier in the last few minutes. I just came down to Williams because I wanted to ask them how much they're having to amend Alex's run plan for this afternoon following the damage to Logan's car, which they're working on behind some screens at the moment here in the garage. Front suspension and gearbox, they said, but chassis is OK. So, of course, he's not running. You can see him there in the uh, garage there on the, the headsets listening to what's going on. But I asked them if they were changing Alex's run plan. They said, to be honest, the weather is a bigger factor for them right now in changing their programme than the damage to Logan's car. So the team that really need to get out there and do some running, having to wait for this rain. But as we say, it's got heavier in the last few moments. And uh, I'm pretty sure those out there will be coming in shortly and uh, giving it a breather and seeing if they can get out again uh, in any time soon. Oh. I'm not sure what your radar is saying, but at the moment it's pretty consistent and heavier. It is raining, Rachel, and we've got rain now visibly through the 130R JT and Danny Ricardo on those slicks leaving, well, complete lines, isn't it, really? And he's crawling in. Yeah, so no doubt Ricardo will box this lap. Yep. as he's crawling around the circuit and into the pit lane so we go back into just random chat <laughs> once more as Ricardo into the pit lane and now one thing Josh mm -hmm. Wednesday mm -hmm. lot of fun oh yeah brands hatch so much fun you actually got to get on the circuit as well which is something I'm really hoping I can do at Donington I've still got the bit of rubber just on the sideboard. <laughs> and I don't know if I can... Sh Hopefully they have the cables. There's the, oh, there's yes. the sticker. <laughs> so you did put it on the laptop. Brilliant. By the way, you, people... Uh, someone did just text me and say, are you actually in a commentary box at Suzuka? Because it looks like you're in a, in a porter cabin at the moment with your... With your, with your where are you in the um, conservatory, right? Yes. It looks like you're in the commentary box uh, in Japan right now. Not, 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 not thinking. It looks like they, you, you just sent me there. We haven't sent him to Japan. He was in Brands Hatch, but he wasn't at, you know, in Suzuka. No. It works, though. I would love to be in Suzuka. Everybody would love to be in Suzuka. Best commentary box of the but year. But I'm not. Suzuka is, hands down, the best commentary box of the year. I know people say, oh, China is. No, Suzuka. You can see right into the pit lane, and it's a wonderful atmosphere, and it's one of the best. Monsters are being rebuilt. My last name is Honda, but boy, do I love red flags. <laughs> Carlos, can we take a picture with you? We love you so much. Smooth operator. Oh, well, they might see him. Yeah, probably. Tedos is at turn one. He's gone out on the track for us. Time trivia in a moment, but uh, we've sent Ted trackside, and as he's made his way down there, it will be it will be wrong not to go and say hi, even though there are no cars down there. Hi, Ted. Huh? Come trackside, they said. Do the Martin Brundle job, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> well, they didn't mention this, did they? 
Welcome to turn one. <laughs> Actually, Crofty, just a bit of an act. I'm beside myself with excitement to be down here. Oh, Do you know why? Because I very used good. to get up as a lad. I used to get up as a lad to the middle of the night to watch the Japanese Grand Prix. Loved it, I did. Middle of the night. It's great. My parents couldn't tell me to go to bed because there was a Grand Prix on. I watched Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost end up in that gravel trap over there in 1990. I watched a year later as Nigel Mansell was starting to get his act together with, Willi with the Williams Renault end up in what was a gravel trap just over there. It's not now. It's full of tarmac, slightly dis dis disappointingly. And hand that year's championship, the 1991 championship, to Ayrton Senna. I got up in the middle of the night to watch the championship years of Michael Schumacher, of Mika Hakkinen, and Rocket around here. here, actually, in the Mika Hakkinen years. I was working in that commentary box over there. But I digress. I am just excited to be down here. Hey, listen, it would be great if there were some more cars. I want to see how they go into turn one. And, you know, you look at, you hear from the drivers, you hear from the teams, that actually this first bit in turn one, I know it looks on camera, especially from that camera angle on the outside, like it's quite a tight turn. When you get down here and look on the inside, it's easy for me to understand that they don't actually break until this point, until the apex. That's not where they even con contemplate breaking. And actually, they don't even break there. They just lift off, go down a gear or two, and then power up into the S's, actually putting on a lot of G, up to 5G in dry conditions in the middle of that corner. So uh, yeah, if only we had some cars uh, down here, we could have a look. But hope springs eternal, Crofty, much like the water coming from uh, the sky. Nice view up to the paddock, though. Look, we can see the, uh, the grandeur of the grandstand there overlooking your commentary box mm. and the paddock. Any sign of some cars? I'm wave no, afraid not. I'm waving at you, but Ted, at the start of your little piece there, you said you were beside yourself <laughs> uh, with delight at being down at turn one. Is that because you're amongst Sebastian Vettel's bees or what's left of the bees down there? Are, are there any of his bees that were that were, were given new homes last year? Look, the, there are the beehives behind you. There are. Yes, yes, I'm delighted to say that the Sebastian Vettel's insect hotels, and let's not call them bee houses or beehives because they're not, uh, they are insect hotels, are here, they are still standing, and they are successful, they are doing their business, they are home to a load of insects. I've actually just recorded uh, a piece for the uh, F1 show uh, later today, so do tune in for that where we can get nice and close up with the bee hotels. There are three of them left, Yuki Sonodi's, Yuki Sonoda's Bee Hotel, or Insect Hotel, I should say, uh, Ferrari's Insect Hotel, and Sebastian Vettel's Insect Hotel. The other eight have been transferred for Around further circuit, scientific yeah. research to the Yamada Bee Farm near Okayama. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I've got more details on that in the F1 show a little bit later. But, uh, yeah, they haven't fallen down. They haven't been, uh, you know, ravaged by the, uh, the, J the Japanese winters, which can be uh, quite severe in these parts. Snow, wind, ice, rain, they get down here. But, uh, yeah, they're still standing and they're still doing a great job of encouraging biodiversity and providing some lovely lodgings out of the rain for some insects. Thank you very much, Professor Kravitz, who is down there at turn one, two and three, beginning of the S's section. There's a quick look then as we see the circuit. This is live pictures that we've got from the webcam here at Tezuka. And the weather has returned. The clouds are here and the fans are just sort of staying around. But it is getting a little bit worse out there. And you can see the clouds rolling in. Low grip conditions is officially what we've been determined up here in the commentary box as well. So that's uh, always great fun. And nobody's heading out on the circuit at the moment as well. We have 35 minutes left then in the second practice session for the Japanese Grand Prix here and nobody is bothering to venture out onto the circuit and the rain falling heavier and heavier. I think at JT it's gone uh, pretty much past that sort of, it's raining to it's now the soaking rain that you experienced actually at Brand Satch on Wednesday, that same type of fine rain. Yeah, Wednesday as uh, we looks like we've got a McLaren coming out, mm, possibly on intermediate tyres of Piastri, as you said. But uh, the rain on Wednesday was absolutely nothing compared to 2023. 
Oh. That was the worst rain that I had ever been in in the 2023 launch day. And... Does anyone know what it's like on, on Donington in two weeks? Am I going to have to take some umbrellas? It... L I don't know. Let me look. What? It looked big. Yeah. At, at Brands. It was very big. Oh, wow. That's a piece that. of rubber. That's in the tyres. Yes. Oh, my goodness me. Look at that. That is a very big marble. That's on the that's on the uh, desktop forevermore. I hope we get to walk the track. The plan is, by the way, uh, for when we're at uh, Donington, we'll be filming a couple of shows. So we'll be filming an introduction for the touring car season. So I'll be trackside uh, filming an intro for the year, like, you know, 2024, blah, 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 blah. Let's get going. Uh, we'll be doing some interviews with some drivers and some um, mechanics as well and everyone that we can get a hold of. And uh, we'll be having a separate show of a season preview where we'll combine everything we learned from the three tests. Piastri out. Piastri's coming pit. out, yeah. Right. Fantastic. So, yeah, we'll be combining everything we learned from the three tests there. And then we'll have two live shows whilst at Donington as Piastri comes out on the circuit. Uh, we'll have the morning session and then the afternoon session. Here is Doing Matrix. at the moment, but I've spoken to the team. We have got a car out on track because now what they want to do is they want to assess the cars in this weather. They were waiting before because they said the rain was too inconsistent. Right. So when it's that getting wetter, then maybe stopping, they're not interested. It's when they've got some consistent rain, which is what it is now, although it's lightened up a tiny bit, that's when they want to get out there and see what they can find out. So I'm going to have a quick word with Jack doing now and Jack we were waiting for some cars to go out we were getting bored waiting for it now that the rain's consistent it's worth running is that right yeah you know and it's just the rain's just about to stop as well so it's a super annoying session you know when you're in there you're running in a dry session it goes past in the blink of an eye and now there's no running and all of a sudden you've got 37 minutes still left in the session but if this can stay consistent even if it's just light and stay you know we can get some running on the inters but just the inter is such an important player one lap in qualifying and now we obviously have five sets, but with the new regulation, we don't have an extra set for tomorrow. So all the drivers are saying, well, what if I need five sets for tomorrow? So very difficult to actually just use that one session, if we're not, that one tyre, if we're not going to learn anything. How much say do you have in that with the team? Myself, you know, I'm up there on the wall and we're looking at the conditions and I, you know, I can sort of see at least how it, how it looks. And we're managing, luckily, and McLaren has just gone out. We can see how the spray is, how the car potentially is behaving so that we can see, all right, are we actually going to learn something valuable? Is it going to be representative for tomorrow? Um, so, you know, just up there with Kyra and discussing these things. Um, but that oh, the signal's gone from Rach. Look for that, but at least I can provide a little bit of information. If you're Esteban or Pierre, though, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, I want to run one set now and then at least I get a handle on them and then wait, or...? You know, it's very difficult. If it's going to be re representative... Let's... Yeah, it's... If, if you're going to be able to actually take something for tomorrow, for sure you would do it. But then again, if it's looking like it's going to be iffy for qualifying, you're like, no, I'd prefer to, you know, take it as it comes, learn in qualifying, and at least have five sets. All right, Jack, thank you very much for joining us and coming down off the pit wall. I'll let you guys get on with it now. We've got some cars on track. Cheers, Rach. Well, Joe's gone out there, but we've just had Piastri come back in, and he said over the radio as well, it's not that wet out. And then you just know, just, just said, OK, let's go. So now they're heading out there on the circuit, but it's not that wet out there. So they're not getting the full run in that they wanted to. As we just heard from Jack doing, it's not the best tarmac situation. It's not the best situation at all, really, to get out there and see what the conditions are like. And we're seeing now with Sonoda as well, JT. It's wet in the first sector, but in, the, in sector two and the back half of sector three, it's not that wet at all. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Zoe, Sonoda, Ricardo, and Bottas out on track. No one else in pit lane. Sonoda, no more rain expected, but no cars I can see of in pit lane with their engine on getting ready to go out. Do you know, I'm starting to think that they're all going to box this lap because if there's no more rain expected, they're not going to burn up a set of intermediate tyres, as Jack just said, five for the weekend now, uh, with no extra set given, which is uh, a surprise to me. Didn't know about that regulation change uh, coming into it. But we get three sets of the full wet tyres. Nobody's going to bolt the full wet tyres on because if it is monsoon conditions on Sunday, we're going to need those. But in the intermediate, as Jack said, it's, it's, a, it's a very crucial tyre. 
and it could be wet at any point in the weekend. So they've got to get this right, but they're burning them up right now. So they've got to bring them in. Yeah, as we look down on the driver tracker and Zoe has pitted. Valtteri's asked, uh, been asked for feedback on track conditions. Yeah, the node has gone through. Yeah, he's gone for a lap, hasn't he? As, as Joe boxed, Joe's boxed. Sonoda has gone through. Uh, Valtteri says, yeah, I mean, it's damp, but it's not going to be great for t the tyres. Same with Ricardo. Yeah, OK, copy. We'll box at the end of this lap and do a static pit stop practice. Copy is a seven touch off. So Sonoda is uh, lifting to that first corner. So he's not going to be uh, completely on a push lap either. This is more about data gathering on the intermediate tyres. So Sonoda might end this session fastest because he might be the only one to actually set a complete lap time. Bottas is boxing and, and boxes lap. Uh, box, box, boxes lap. Box, box, box is what we've just heard from Bottas. And he now comes in to the pit lane as well from race control. Keep an eye on Albon as I can see his brake is on. So they must be starting the engine up there. Yep, we'll keep an eye as Bottas does his practice yep, start. Yep, here we go. So Albon comes through and 37, 10 miles an hour. So Albon's coming out on the circuit now as well. We're on board with Yuki Tsunoda. Not a great picture here, is it? Because we're, we're live with Yuki Tsunoda and then we're seeing Sky's on board. And Sky's on board is around about 20 seconds behind what we're seeing that of Tsunoda live. So they need to hurry those up a little bit. SHG says, what a surprise. Even Alpine don't have a spare chassis here. Yep. Alpine don't have a spare chassis, they'll have one in China, but if they crash, they're in the same position as what uh, Williams were last time out in Australia. Sonoda is and yeah, Sonoda is going to complete this lap time. I don't think he's going to come into the pit lane as he goes through. No, yeah. he's going through. And Sonoda sets the fastest time of the session so far, then it's a one to 142.304 across the line. There we go. Ricardo goes second with a 146.461. Albon on an outlap still. Knew that was coming. And uh, charge on, charge on. So they're all changing that up as well now. We knew that was coming. We knew we were going to have a, a difference coming through. As the session continues. So, fingers crossed, it's going to be good. Alexander Albon is on the lap on those intermediate tyres as well, JT. So, a uh, bit of a surprise. I thought he might leave it, actually, but he's gone straight out there. Yeah, going quite uh, quick on his fast lap. Uh, sorry, going quite uh, quick on his out lap, mm. not even on a timed lap yet. And so, uh, just getting the tyres warmed up. I'm out of drink with 26 minutes to go. This could get quite interesting. Ah. Mm. is improving out there as well. So we can do... Oh, here's Albon's radio. So feedback from some other cars. Potentially too dry. They've done a single push lap. Potentially too dry for Inter. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Boxed, boxed. Yeah, anyone who was waiting. So, so something tells me that Sonoda and Ricardo are going to pit this lap because that has come from their radio because mm. they're the only cars that have done a single lap. So they're, so they're going to come in. Ricardo might stay out a little bit longer. He needs the practice. Otherwise, he'll only have one mm. going into tomorrow. Sergeant watches on again on the sidelines. He's getting used to this role. Uh, brave enough to uh, pop his head out of the... Uh, driver room and come into the garage as Max Verstappen standing on watching. Three stars on his boots, 21, 22 and 23 to be a three-time world champion. It was here, of course, in 2022. They've not made it. No, they haven't. They've gone straight through, haven't they? Both of them have. Ricardo and Sonoda uh, go straight through and they weren't They're supposed to. Another lap. Yeah. Okay, let's do one more, he just said. Yeah. Bit of weaving on the fronts. Care for charge off uh, of the call as well. So yeah, they are doing one more lap. The RBs, Honda power unit underneath them as well. Well, the the, the Red Bull powertrains. It's a bit weird that we got 
Red Bull and RB in there too, but it's the Visa Cash App R team, so it's the V Carb as it comes through. Or Alpha Tari, whichever one you want to call it. Toro Rosso. Red Bull 2. Just take your pick, but to know that on home soil might end this session fastest at this rate. Of course, Ricardo's going to have a new chassis as well at the Japan at the Chinese Grand Prix. As we get in towards Miami, are they going down to Ted? No, it's Damon Hill. I thought I heard someone say Ted, and uh, he's on the track side doing a Martin Brundle. Now's the time to throw into Ted Rabbits when we've got two cars out on the circuit if you want to do it. They'll have to send him out tomorrow, but Rachel's in the pits, and here's Sonoda. Look at that, one second improvement already, JT. So it's not raining out there, track's fine, and the, these intermediate tyres are going to be burning up. And, it's a stupid decision to keep them out there. Because look, I can see the marks. There's no water. They're going to be eaten up like crazy. And to put another cycle through, there's going to be five laps now on the Inters. It's a 140.946. So uh, these tyres are going to be dead. These intermediate tyres. And uh, Ricardo does a 141.913. Puts it in second, the nine turns down. This is Sonoda. I uh, box, box, box for all Sonoda. So, yeah, they saw the same thing we did on these tyres. We can clearly see the grooves, and it's like, okay, that's enough. Box, box, box. Well, this seems to be a session that anybody could have given up, to be fair. It's one of these ones that did we really need to run it. I mean, we've only had uh, seven cars venture out onto the track. The other 14 have decided to stay in the pit lane. Well, 13, really, because Sergeant wasn't taking part. But still, we haven't... And Kicksalba have seen enough. Joe followed by Bottas, both at the pit exit. But that's it. So I don't think... Uh, apparently, the Salbers aren't going to go out anymore. So that's them done. No time on the board. Piastri's fourth. Hamilton's third. The RB is the only one to set a lap time. And this is unusual because it's not a wet session. It's a really weird one, this, because the track's drying out, but because the weekend's forecast is rain, they don't want to head out there and risk running up the intermediates and risk running out the dries. So it's akin to a washout, but it's not raining. It, it's a really weird session we've got here in Japan. And also, it feels weird here being here in April. Just saying, it does. Yeah. It does, but we're here as a uh, having a look at Ricardo. Yeah, it's the first time, by the way, uh, the Australian and Japanese Grand Prix have been uh, side by side each other in the calendar since 1995 uh, as well, because in that year we had Japan the, as uh, Suzuka. Then we went to Australia at Adelaide. No, sorry, correction. We, went, we had um, Japan at Suzuka. Then we had the Pacific Grand Prix, which is at Aida. And then we went to Australia at Adelaide. So it's the first time that Japan and Australia have been side by side on the calendar since 1995, 29 years ago. Because, of course, in 1996, Australia moved to Albert Park and moved to the front of the season. And Japan stayed at the back. Now Japan's moved up the order as well. It does feel a bit weird, but then again, I'm always the person who says it still feels weird to me going to Brazil at the end of the season because back in my day, the Brazilian Grand Prix was like rounds one or two or three of the season. It was Brazil was right at the start of the year, and we always used to go there and get great racing. Now Brazil's at the end of the year, not at the start, so it, it's just a bit of a change around for me. But China did the same thing. China used to be at the end of the calendar. Now it's up the front. And it all just moves around the order a little bit. I still can't get used to Belgium being moved around. But yeah, dead space. Yes, after yeah. of all, Zoe is back out on track. Mm. 2004 was when they moved the Brazilian Grand Prix to the end of the season. It always used to be in the first three races of the year. But then in 2004, uh, they got the season-ending slot and it remained there. Uh, ever since towards the end. And I still think Interlagos should be the last race of the season because it, although Interlagos was always great at the front half of the season, it used to set up the championship quite nicely. Having it as a title decider really worked in 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 
and then again in 2012. But, it works. Gosh. Yeah? Money, fireworks, cool oh, lights. Yeah. Abu Dhabi. Money. Yeah. Qatar. <laughs> mm. What has happened to the championship? I mean, look, if we just look at the championship now. We get, ba I'm going to take this off the wall because this is the old one. I'm getting the new one later. We get Bahrain. Okay start to the year, but still should be Australia. Saudi Arabia. Why is that still on the calendar? It's been boring, and every time we go there, we think we're going to get bombed. Australia, fantastic race now. They've changed it. Every time we go there, there's always something new to watch. And Australia, I think, is just absolutely amazing. Uh, even though we we complain about it, adding the F2 and F3 have really sort of given new life to Australia. Uh, Japan, always a great time to come here. And it's uh, interesting to have it at this time of the year as well. Still quite good. Um, after that, China. Well, we haven't had that since 2019. Uh, the Chinese Grand Prix there. The last time we were there, I had food poisoning. Really bad food poisoning as well. Um, so, uh, not really, that was nothing to do with China. I, was just, I had food poisoning from a, actually, coincidentally enough, JT, I had food poisoning from a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> yeah, it knocked me for six that day, I can tell you. Um, Miami. I think we all know where we stand on Miami, don't we? That can, that can, that can get off the calendar quite quickly. Imola, stay. Love Imola. Always a great race. Always has been a great race as well. Monaco, if it's wet, it's a great race. If it's dry, it's a bit dull. But still, Monaco always throws up something and it's always an exciting one to commentate on. Um, like last year, for instance, it started raining right in the middle of it. How great was that? Uh, Canada. Can I love Canada. It's a weird race, actually, Canada. Yep. It, feels, it feels different, doesn't it, to everything else on the calendar. But Canada's great. Spain. Last year, I thought was one of the best races of the season because it became a strategy race. And we're getting race. rid of it. Yay. Ah, are we, though? We'll get onto that in a second, actually. Um, we, I know Spanish Grand Prix is moving to Madrid, but there is a rumour about Catalonia staying yeah. on the calendar. We'll get onto that in just a second. Austria. I think Austria's, uh, was, Austria was always a great race, so having that back in as a sprint is good. Silverstone, non-negotiable. Hungary, I can always give and take a bit of Hungary. If it's wet, it's a good race. If it's dry, it's another Monaco. Belgium. Um, Belgium's always the ultimate challenge. In the wet, it's uh, dangerous. In the dry, it's still just as dangerous, but it's fun. Mon um, yeah. Netherlands. I think in the first couple of years we were going, yeah, it's not really a great race, is it, the Netherlands? Last year, I think, really sort of thought, OK, this is actually a great racetrack. So, yeah, Zandvoort can stay. F, we and F2 have gone, nope. Yeah, not going there again. Um, Italy, Monza, that's non-negotiable, has to be there. It's, like, it's, it's a great, great race. Azerbaijan can go, because that's always an up and down, but I, I don't like Azerbaijan that much. Singapore's an absolute stay, uh, because that is always, a, that's, that's the one that everyone trains for. Cota, that can stay. Mexico, uh, Mexico can actually go. I don't, it, Mexico is always an up and down race. It's a great form of, I don't even that though. Mexico, in my opinion, can go. Sao Paulo stays. Vegas, well, we all went there going, Ugh. and then it was an okay race. I want to give Vegas a second crack before I say anything. Qatar, again, that was an okay race, but that's only because Pirelli mucked the tires up, so. I, th I don't think Qatar's going to be as exciting. That can go. And Abu Dhabi, well, that can get in the bin. <laughs> it's a boring race, and it's a boring track, and everyone falls asleep, and it's only memorable of because course. it happened in 2021. Yeah. We've had some stuff over the past couple of days that the Turkish Grand Prix is looking for a return, hopefully aiming for a 2026 return. Yeah. And I wonder which one that's going to... That'll probably go into rotation with Imola, probably, because Imola's contract runs out at the end of 25. So it'll be, I reckon that'll go in rotation there. Um, but also, the big news we haven't talked about much uh, is the fact that Liberty Media... And we were going to talk about it as well next weekend on MotoGP's coverage. And their condolences to MotoGP. Yes. Liberty Media have bought an 86% share in uh, Dorna. So now have uh, ownership over Moto GP, Moto Two, Moto Three, Moto E, uh, World Superbikes, uh, the Junior Grand Prix Championship, and the new Women's International Racing Circuit uh, Championship, where our colleague Maddie Patterson owns a race team of Semket Racing, uh, and uh, she'll be competing this year as well as team principal 
uh, as well with two fantastic riders uh, that hopefully we'll be hearing from throughout the season as well. And Maddie will be joining us again on our MotoGP coverage throughout the season as she's trackside for, well, most of the races. Uh, and she'll be joining us in between media sessions, uh, duties, and in between qualities and races and that lot. And then hopefully she'll be in the box for some of them as well. Basically, she's just our reporter trackside at the moment. She's very kindly uh, helping out on the coverage this year. And uh, Julie is going to be back with us soon as well on the comms team as well. Uh, but yeah, so Dorna have now brought MotoGP. Do you want the only good thing is, JT, about this? No more direct clashes between Formula One and MotoGP. Thank the Lord. They've changed. They're going to change that. So there'll be no more clashes, which works out perfectly for us. Yeah. And, uh, well, there's 43 grade one circuits with 57 layouts. Yes. So, Do you know what the Albert only... Park, yeah. that's on the calendar. Mm. Estoril, Josh. Uh, too small for modern F1 cars for Estoril, um, unfortunately. Uh, Estoril is quite a good one for MotoGP, but they've they've stuck to Portimao yeah. now. Um, so I think Portimao. Yeah, Portimao, yeah, that, that that's uh, that's yeah. that should be on the calendar for F1. That's always a, that was a great race in Portugal. Mugello. Mugello should be on the F1 calendar. It's just like Suzuka. It's a it's a classic circuit built in the 60s and it's fantastic to race at. And we had a great race there in 2020. Why we don't go there for the Tuscan Grand Prix? I don't know. Buddha International Circuit in India. Well, we, we left there because of the visa issue, but now that Liberty Media owned Dorna and uh, they had a quite successful MotoGP race there, I wouldn't be surprised if India might be on the radar to come back for Formula One, you know, at that circuit. I'm, I wouldn't be too surprised if it comes back on in rotation. Thailand Grand Prix? No, no. The, no. the Buri Ram is not an ADF1 circuit. That's still very much a MotoGP track. Yeah. It's too tight in the last sector. Valencia? Nah, nah, Valencia's, um, Valencia's very much a test circuit, and even MotoGP don't really like racing at Valencia too much. No, they say it's, it's the wrong time of the year. Yeah. Magnicor? Um, Magnicor was a gr is a great circuit, but it's too small for modern F1. If it, although, if we had a French Grand Prix, I would like it to be at Magnicor. We'll have so we will get some overtaking there, but not a lot. But um, And yeah. a track... That said with a sigh, pull the card. Nope. F1 doesn't work there, but other series do. Uh, F1 would work at pull the card if they actually put the effort into the layout. Yeah. Because they've got yeah, like a hundred. And, they've got like a billion layouts, and they chose the I can worst one. Get, I can get the number. It is. But. Yeah, you get the layout. There's only one circuit that I now. There's been rumours about this for a couple of years now, that Formula One and MotoGP, Liberty Media and Dorna, wanted to do a joint weekend, and have the MotoGP and the Formula One race at the same circuit. Now, there's only about four to five circuits on the calendar where they share the same layout, like identical. Yes, we have Silverstone, yes, we have Austria, but at Silverstone, MotoGP use a different uh, chapel because it goes further out. And in Austria, they use the chicane, Formula One doesn't. So the only yeah. circuits that use identical layouts are Cota, Catalonia, and I can't remember the third one off the top of my head. So it's only Cota and Catalonia, the two. Now, Formula One are not, and I repeat, not going to let MotoGP anywhere near its American market at Cota. That's a no-no. So it won't be yeah. there. So the only track that I can see a possible dual uh, race would be Barcelona, the Catalonia circuit. Yeah. And it makes sense, doesn't it, JT? Because... I found it quite interesting that all of a sudden, Formula One have moved the Spanish Grand Prix to Madrid and called it the Spanish Grand Prix. But Stefano Domenicali said, we might still race at Barcelona. And I put a tweet out. And I said, before this came out, I said, yeah, they could just do what MotoGP do and call it the Catalan Grand Prix. And ever since that yeah. announcement, I've started to think to myself, Dorna are based in Barcelona. It's their home yeah. race. Why, it, and they've got enough garages, it would be the perfect opportunity 
if F1 and MotoGP raced at exactly the same layout at Barcelona. And there you go, F1 becomes the Catalan Grand Prix. And that's how Barcelona stays on the calendar. It becomes a double header with MotoGP. And now Liberty have control of it, and they say that Catalina is staying on the circuit calendar. That's how. So I am fully expecting in the future Formula One and MotoGP, now owned by Liberty Media under both, will announce that they will have a joint weekend together and it will be at Barcelona and it will be called the Catalan Grand Prix. There's 48 pit garages at Barcelona. And yeah, if you limit it to just F1 and Moto um, GP, that's fine. Yeah. Because. 167 yeah. layouts at Paul Ricard. Blimey. Also, and only I, five I have, of them I have are the th grade one. I remember the third circuit. So it's Cota. Uh, it's Cota. Catalonia and Qatar. They're the only three layouts on both calendars that are identical, that don't change. Because Austria have the chicane and Silverstone yeah. uses a different chapel. So that's it. The only three races on the calendar, the only three races on the calendar that have exactly the same layout are Qatar, uh, Catalonia, and Cota. Formula One aren't going to let MotoGP in their Cota. I doubt, no. even though Qatar does have enough garages, I doubt they'll do Qatar because Qatar is the season opener for MotoGP, and F1 goes there. F1 goes there later in the year, and I don't think F1 and Dorna want to be tripping over at the season launch. So the, the, the realistic one is Catalonia, and it makes the most sense. So, yeah. You've heard it here first, folks. It will be Catalonia. If F1 go back to Portimao, that's also a possibility, isn't it? Or did I use a different... Different turn five at Tory Vip. Okay. So where the hotel section is, um, Formula One go longer and use a longer loop, uh, whereas Motor GP cut in and use a short hairpin. So uh, there's two different hairpins. So there is, there is a difference because it negates the speed coming up through Samson and Craig Jones at the top of the hill. They so, like to be different, don't they? Yeah, it's something to do with the riding because you can't, because in the Formula One car, you can take the corners a bit more sharpest, but in a MotoGP bike, you've got to lean the bike in. So there's yeah. different layouts. But that's why, Cat uh, that's why there's Catalonia, Cota, and um, Qatar. They're the only three. So it, it will be Cat. And considering Stefan Remember de Cali said it, it will be Catalonia. So it will be the Formula One will have a Catalan Grand Prix and it'll be a double header with MotoGP. That's what's going to happen. And why nobody else is saying that, I don't know. It's like, because, do you know why? No one is saying this because no F1 journalist is also a MotoGP journalist and no MotoGP journalist is also an F1 journalist. So Harry Benjamin, I'm looking at here to put two and two together, who is both journalists, and I want, I'm hoping he puts two and two together. Here's Cars of Track, Magazine. Yeah, two wet, copy that. Pass the truck. So it's two dry for intermediate, and it's two wet for slicks. What do people want? Albon, Magnus and Hulkenberg, three cars out on the track right now on dry tyres. Albon's out there on intermediates, but he's coming in. So we've got, it just doesn't work for anything at the moment. We've got the new gyro cam on for Magnus at the moment, but yeah. Yeah, at a chapel for Silverstone, you've got like that. You've got, it's basically just like a massive blob of tar tarmac. You've got the international circuit on one side. You've got the MotoGP layout, and then you've got the F1 layout. Two seconds. Layout. Yeah, it's ready for slicks. All right, so Albon's saying it's ready for slicks, and Magnus is saying it's not. What is going on now? Go on, GT. Yeah, so there's like three diff different layouts at that one circuit. Mm, there's a lot down there as well, as Magnuson comes in. Yep. Um, Drew, uh, Drew Griffin says, Should F1 use MotoGP FP2 style where they top 10 go through to qualify, get more cars on track? I, mm, no. I, if anything, Formula 1 should probably adjust how they do with the practice session times. Like, we don't need three hours of practice time. We can have, I maybe, I've, I've said in the past, we should have a 90 minute session on a Friday as practice and then a 30 minute session on Saturday morning uh, to get the cars ready. So that gives you two hours of practice and two practice sessions. 
So yeah, that's how I've always thought it would work best. But uh, no, if, if F1 adopted MotoGP style of qualifying format, you would lose every time the suspense of, say, a Hamilton or a, or a Sainz or, or even a Verstappen getting knocked out in, in one of the qualifying sessions because it will go on practice times and we'll just bolt out there and set the fastest times. Whereas in qualifying itself, it's different. So I think it works in MotoGP because you can't have them all on the track at the same time in the qualifying sessions, because, but it doesn't work in F1. It's a weird system. I don't even think it really yeah. works in Moto uh, GP, the format as well. I think it's too complicated. Ted's down in the, in the track at turn one. It's a legendary circuit. The S is a legendary corners, and I'm getting as close as I possibly can to see how the McLaren goes. It's pretty sure-footed around there, even on the dry tyres and the slicks. It's not as quick as it will be in the dry. And in the dry, I mean, crikey O'Reilly Crofty, it must be so quick around here. I'm definitely coming back here next year. I'm going to steal this tab on off Martin Brundle and come back here next year to see them in the dry. But it's such an interesting part of the corner. You know, the S is... They will not stop turning for 1.2 kilometers of this lap from turn one until turn seven, as we see the Sauber coming towards us, still pretty gingerly on there. And it's uh, car number 24, so that's Zhou Guang Yu still going round. They will not stop turning for 1.2 kilometers. Just imagine that. In fact, it's two kilometers. There's only 1.2 kilometers where they're going in a straight line around this whole Suzuka circuit. So uh, yeah, it's absolutely astonishing. And you know, my mind goes back to that amazing first sector of Max Verstappen. Do you remember last year, mm. that mind blowing yeah. first sector where Max Verstappen was peerless through these S's corners, not as slowly as Valtteri Bottas going there. He was absolutely mustered through there. And I'm just wondering if it's dry tomorrow as the forecast suggests, whether this will be the place to watch Max Verstappen in that Red Bull RB20 through here but Crofty I've got to say what have I been doing in the pit lane all these years this is brilliant this is the place to be you're not going to be able to separate me from this chicken wire I'll tell you I'm getting as close as I can and I'm going to might watch here for the rest of the weekend anyway for now back to you Ted's having fun I, you know after all these years your enthusiasm Ted Kravitz is infectious I love it he is the kid that has got the keys to the candy store uh, today we're not going to see him for a while now. He'll be out there with the Porsches come out as well. It makes, it makes you want to go to the side of the track now, doesn't it? It does. I'll tell you what, shall I leave you here? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave he's, you here. He's only about... Well, I want to go and join him. Might be able to hop foot it down from the commentary box. You never know. And Oscar There's going to be no one Oscar in the commentary Piastri. box at this point. Is this when we our coverage takes over as well? Quick, they've all failed it. Get, get the other two. Josh is on the commentary. Crofty and Anton have left the commentary box. Crofty nearly slipped up there. He said uh, he's only about a minute away. But then they're not in the commentary box. They're not in the grandstand. They're in, they're in, I reckon they are in the porter cabin in the TV compound again. They're not in the commentary box, I don't think. And they're just making out that they're there. They're in, they're in the porter cabin in the, in the TV compound, I can tell. Crofty nearly slipped up there. I can, that's, how, that's what it is. Piastri on a... Oh, Piastri's going to go fastest here. He already has gone fastest. That's how much we've been looking at the timing screens uh, over the past minute, because his last lap was his fastest. It's a 139.105, but we're going to have a, a new fastest time here from Piastri. And it's a 136.862. Piastri fastest in this session, but it doesn't really mean anything. Yes, now it's time for dry. Normal grip conditions as everybody starts to head out onto the circuit now as well. It's finally getting really busy, Josh, with less than a minute to go of the session. Yeah, well, waited for the last five <laughs> minutes for all the cars to go out on track. The cars that have decided not to venture out onto the circuit for Stappen. Sergeant, of course, after his crash in free practice one. Gasly, Perez, Alonso, Stroll, and Russell, and Hulkenberg, Ooh. and Magnussen just come out on track as well. A little twitch from Lewis uh, Hamilton coming through the first curve before the S's. He's twitching now, look, as well. So that Mercedes not heating up its tyres correctly as he comes through the S's. Pass where uh, Ted Kravitz is, just at the top of the hill, as he flies over the top at the Dunlop. Uh, cars twitching everywhere. It's one of the Alpines in his way as well. Who was that? He's passed. Esteban Ocon. 
as he comes in towards Degna 2. This is where he binned it back in 2010. Checkered flag is out, so the session is over. And Lewis might want to go fastest here as he comes into the hairpin at turn 11. Back on the power. He was in second gear then. He was trying to go as much as he can uh, to push it through. Sainz missed the time to set a lap time, so he's not going to get a, a proper one on the board. Leclerc will. Piastri, a 134.725, faster still. Takes the time. Leclerc's two seconds down. But Lewis might try and go for some glory here as he comes up towards the 130R. Does he take it full throttle? Let's take a listen. He did, completely full throttle as he comes into the braking zone for the Casio Triangle. Downhill, it is downhill, this start finish straight as well. That's why the pit lane, uh, their boards always look so staggered. Hamilton at 135.226, it's downhill turn one, so you're rolling uh, when you're not even like, meaning to. But Hamilton only second fastest, JT. And uh, McLaren, for what it's worth, might end this session fastest, and, and will end this session fastest. Yep, half a second off the pace. Lewis Hamilton, just uh, quite slow in the first sector, 35.724, a 41.449 sector two, and a 18.053 as Leclerc goes third across the line with a 138.760. Fina, half seconds off the pace as well, but it's Piastri. On top, followed by Hamilton and Leclerc Verstappen, set in no time, down in 14. They will do a practice start, and this is Oscar Piastri coming out of the pit lane and in towards turn. Oh no, it's Landon Norris, and he's gone straight on. Two, one, and two. Oh, we got on a bit of a damp patch, went straight on, and look, there's no gravel there anymore, so he can get back on the circuit. But a little mistake there from Lando at the exit turn two, just caught on the damp patch. Cold tyres, wet track, sim sliding off. Yep, straight out on uh, the track from the pit lane. There's Yuki Tsunoda's wing sparking in the bottom of the floor as well. Two Alpines, uh, sorry, the two RBs stayed on the intermediate tyres in that session. Uh, Albon put on a set of slicks in the end, but then went back to the Inters. Uh, and, no, Albon stayed on Inters throughout, I don't know. Yeah, Albon stayed on Inters in that session, so he said it was only for drives, but... He decided not to. Now he's gone to eighth. Bottas, has, I believe, had a lap time deleted by the stewards. Yeah, Bottas and Joe have had lap times deleted, and Albon's had a lap time reinstated. What's going on here? The timing screen's reorganising itself. Is this based on the Delta time still? That's a bit confusing. The session's over. So look, look at that. The De look now we've got Bottas ahead of. Sure, yeah, timer screen's reorganising itself. Maybe what's happening is that because they've not set a lap time, they're yeah. going across the line after their practice start. Yeah, so it's confusing the timing screens. Lewis Hamilton starts on pole position, a position he hasn't occupied since Hungary last year, when he took pole this, position 104. This happens, but we don't normally see it because everyone has set way faster laps than mm. what they're setting now but if they've not set a uh, time before then that gets their fastest lap which is like a two minute Lewis was very smooth on that throttle accelerator as well when he dropped the clutch it was very light and tender that was very good there from Lewis not really a session that we were expecting much um, Drew says two in a row for Oscar over Lando yes I know it doesn't mean uh, everything but I'll take what we can get <laughs> absolutely Piastri's topped a session, and he'll go down in the record books as topping a session. As did Heimi Algasquari, who topped the uh, 2010 Japanese Grand Prix third practice session when only two cars went on the track. Him and Timo Glock went out in the circuit there in the Toro Rosso and Virgin Racing team, and they were 1-2 in the session that day before qualifying was abandoned due to the track conditions. And we had to run that on Sunday. And there's Sonoda waving to the fans who have put up with some interesting sessions today. But still a, a pretty much a wasted hour up here in the commentary box. But we've talked a little bit about it. It's one of those sessions where you just sort of go, I could have stayed in bed for that. <laughs> 
be different if it was during the day, but considering it's, it's four o'clock over there in Japan, it's 8 a.m. here in the UK, and it's like, okay, we've got a day to do now, and it's like, thanks, and I've got to go print out my notes as well uh, for the weekend. And let's take a look at how they finish then in this second practice session. It's Oscar Piastri fastest from Lewis Hamilton second. Charles Leclerc finishes in third. Sonoda, Ricardo, Norris, Sainz, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Ocon, Joe, Albon, Magnussen. They set sector times, and that's how it relines up. After that, Verstappen, Sargent, Gasly, Perez, Alonso, Stroll, and Russell in, 22nd, in 20th position. Not bad from Sargent. Wasn't even taking part in this session. He finishes 15th. Not bad, not bad at all. I suppose as well, JT, we're going to be into this one now where we're thinking tomorrow, if it's wet, we'll be in for an interesting session. If it's dry, we're pretty much in for, well, screwed. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to see what happens as all of the track vehicles head out on track before the next session, which I believe is the Porsches. Yeah, it's not the best uh, one we're going to have. Uh, they're not that far ahead of the standings as well overall, but uh, not a bad session then here as we take a look at Suzuka. The rain coming in even more. Will we see it tomorrow? That is the question we need to see. But it's Piastri who tops FP2. So then, JT, what did you make of that one? Uh, pretty useless hour, but... What are your thoughts going into tomorrow? Yeah, a lot of filler content needed there. And, well, we've had a quite a quiet <laughs> free practice to session. There's Yuki Tsunoda with the fans and with Ted with an interview, which we'll see later on this weekend on Sky Sports F1. But we'll have to see... At uh, 3.15 tomorrow, pit lane opens at 3.30 yep. for that session as well. And we'll see. We should have more activity. And by this time tomorrow, we'll know who's on pole position for the Japanese Grand Prix as well of 2024. My thanks to you, JT. My thanks to all of you at home for getting up or staying up to watch this one. Definitely, we're going to be in for an improved weekend. Rain in the air, practice two, a bit of a washout. But that's how it goes sometimes here at the Japanese Grand Prix. You take the rough with the smooth to get a great event. Practice day done here tomorrow, as JT says, we'll be on air at 3.15 for practice three, qualifying from 6.45. That's all in the British summertime in the morning as well. And uh, Jess Ball will be joining us in the commentary box for that one as well. From here, though, it's Sayonara from Japan. We'll see you for practice three and qualifying on Saturday, hopefully a bit drier. Bye-bye.